Now, your Super Doppler 10 forecast from meteorologist Jeremy Wheeler. There is the latest satellite and uh, you know it it is going through some kind of transition. We're not exactly sure what's uh, going on in the center here. There's a big gap. Maybe it's pulling a, a small section of dry air. I doubt it. it seems like it's humid all over the uh, area behind it and around it. But there is something going on. Then it has weakened somewhat. And you can actually see this large gap which reaches into the center of the storm. So that maybe that's a sign of weakening. But don't get me wrong. It is still a hurricane. There's the center in the eye. And some of those rain bands are wrapping around it. It's about 160 miles to the southeast of Wilmington. And they are getting some rain bands pushing to the north. There's a big area of rain down Towards Hatteras, you're getting some rain around Manio right now and also up here in northern Currituck County going over to Moyoc to the west. Scattered showers, Bertie County, Hertford County, uh, really all over the place, northeast North Carolina. We've had a little bit of rain at the very southern edge of Virginia Beach and Chesapeake. Now that's pushed over to the Great Dismal Swamp and pretty soon to Whaleyville. It's moving west quickly. And we've had some inland showers too. There's one in here along Highway 58 over towards uh, Southampton County on the western side there. That's moving west towards Emporia. And a few more scattered showers. Surrey County up here on the peninsula around York County, James City, and a few more into Gloucester, uh, the uh, Middlesex County area, and Northern Neck. There's uh, just been some spotty sprinkles on the eastern shore. So the center of the storm is offshore, but it's forecast to make landfall tomorrow morning towards Wilmington, moves inland. Uh, could make landfall with a 100 mile per hour wind. So even though it has come down in strength, it still could be a formidable storm for the coast. And then it moves down to the south and west and then moves up to the north as a rainmaker. Now here's some of the th conditions you can expect. And so we'll take a look here. For the outer banks, let's say from Manio on southward, rain 5 to 9 inches, could see up to 10 inches across the southern outer banks, maybe towards Hatteras. 45 to 55 mile an hour wind gusts. And if you don't get that today, you, you'll probably get it late tonight or early tomorrow morning. And some of those gusts could get as high as 74 miles an hour. That's hurricane force. And that would be isolated, but it is possible. Four to seven foot storm surge, some beach erosion, lots of problems across the southern outer banks. Now, uh, inland northeast North Carolina, we're talking about from here, Currituck, all the way back to Hertford County. Five to eight inches of rain possible, could see up to 10 inches, probably closer to the Albemarle Sound, and the winds could gust up to about 60 miles an hour, especially tonight and tomorrow. Four to six foot storm surge, western Albemarle Sound. We're watching you carefully because those winds are going to drive that water west for a long time. Southern Bertie, southern Shawan, southern Perquimans County, you could get hit hard by a high storm surge there. Uh, again, most of this tomorrow. So here's the south side, Virginia Beach, back through Suffolk, Isle of Wight, Southampton County. Three to five inches of rain could see up to six in some places. Winds 25 to 35 miles an hour, gust to 45, and some moderate tidal flooding. Uh, the peninsulas, that's the peninsula and the middle peninsula together. Three to five inches of rain. You got some winds 20 to 30, gust to 40, uh, maybe some gust even up to about 45, and some moderate to major tidal flooding up in the river systems. The, around Jamestown and around Yorktown, you could see some high tidal flooding. But the eastern shore should be minor. The northern neck should be minor as well. I think some of the, the winds are going to push that water away from Kipta Peak and off towards Matthews County. All right, so with that, uh, you know, let's take, analyze the winds and help me out. This is meteorologist Dietrich Tate. All right, Jeremy, here's a look at some of the wind gusts here. We have winds gusting over 40 miles per hour for Hatteras. Uh, they're doing the updates now for the uh, National Hurricane Center, uh, kind of updating on Florence every hour. So I saw some reports of gusts over 50 miles per hour across parts of the Outer Banks. So we're expecting this number to kind of creep up a bit as we go through the day. And then the rain coverage will creep up as we work towards this evening. Through the afternoon, again, Hampton Road cities, it'll be intermittent in terms of uh, the rain that we see, squally at times, and then we'll have some dry periods as well, but a lot more rain for the Outer Banks that'll be more steady as we work our way towards 5 o'clock. Some of those outer rain bands sneaking across parts of the peninsula, possibly even the middle peninsula and the eastern shore as we work towards early evening. Here's about 730, and you do see some of that kind of creeping in. Again, some brighter colors indicating some heavy downpours with that, and we're also going to be on guard across North Carolina for the potential for some uh, spin up, some quick spin ups are possible with this. It's based on how it's moving ashore. So, again, we're going to watch for the potential for that and have a way of getting alerts in case we do have any isolated tornado warnings that are issued. And as we head towards 10 o'clock, more of the same with the rain kind of filtering in across the tidewater as we head into our Friday. So, kind of summarizing the rest of the day, as we head towards 3 o'clock, rain coverage about 40% for Hampton Roads. As we head towards 9 p.m., it goes up to about 70%. Again, this is more so Hampton Road cities. Again, if you're across the Outer Banks, northeastern North Carolina, you're going to have a pretty much a 
likely chance for rain as we work our way through the rest of today. As far as the overall timing, again, rain band sliding in. It's going to remain breezy, turning pretty much windy as we head towards tonight with those winds gusting up to about 40 miles per hour. For Friday, we're expecting this to be the worst of the setup for us in terms of uh, the next few days. We're going to have rain and wind that's going to be uh, at its height, I think, for that day. And then we're looking at moderate tidal flooding. And some locations will actually reach major tidal flooding, uh, places like Fort Monroe. As far as Sewell's Point, we're going to go with the high tide late tonight, early tomorrow morning near 1 a.m. at about 5.2 feet. That's near moderate for Friday and Saturday. We're looking at, again, a moderate level as well in terms of the tides. And as mentioned, here's the tides for some areas around town. Notice Corolla by tomorrow noon, major tidal flooding expected. Here's your seven day. Uh, we're looking at unsettled weather for the next couple of days.